whole summit and staying to this last uh, session that is going to be really interesting. Actually, it's uh, the only session in which we have uh, only academic people. So it's going to be different from what we have seen so far. And I hope uh, you like it. Uh, first of all, we will have Ramon Agustí. Uh, he's a full professor at UPC since uh, 1987. Yeah, please. Uh, his work has been focused on transmission and development aspects in fixed digital radio, both on the radio re relay and mobile communications. He has done performance analysis, development of planning tools and equipment for mobile communication systems, and he has published more than 200 papers in these areas. He received the Catalonia Engineer of the Year Prize in 1998, and the Narcisse Monturiol Medal issued by the Catalan government in 2002 for all his uh, research contributions to the mobile and communications field. And he's a member of the Spanish uh, Engineering Academy, so he will surely uh, give a, an interesting talk today. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And first of all, I would like to thank Telefonica just give me the opportunity to, to be here to participate in, in the summit. So my talk is going, is, is dedicated in some way to dynamic spectrum access and cognitive radios. Uh, these are topics that have been dealt more or less yesterday, even today. So uh, probably uh, I will be obliged to, to repeat some concepts. I apologize for that. In any case, I try to minimize, in that case, this duplication. Uh, <clears throat> so, in, in the preparation of this of this talk, uh, I, I, I got from from the organizers some questions to consider that I followed as guidelines, in, 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 as I said in, in in the preparation of this talk. So, first one is cognitive radio will be used by mobile operators in the future as license-free or license-banned. That's one topic that we like to consider. So, second one, which will be the mechanism for using white spaces? When it will be used? That's another, another topic, interesting one. Third one, how we will we use spectrum in 10 years? Dynamic use of a spectrum, maybe? The third one. I took the liberty to include another one, more, more, more focused on, on, on incumbent cellular operators, that will be how cognitive radio networks concept could be used to self manage the cellular networks. Okay. So, in order to do that, just here we have Saf at the line in my talk. We just we start with, with, with framing in some way dynamic spectrum access to cognitive radio. Sometimes there are, they are two concepts that are I use it indistinctly, but they are quite different one from the other. Then we go to um, some brief introduction on TV white spaces, as well as the related issues like standards, uh, coexistent channels, that is a real big problem. Uh, uh, <coughs> television white spaces use cases, even mechanisms for using white spaces. Uh, we will conclude just coming back to some cognitive radio, uh, more com um, concrete solutions in two scenarios. First one, Decentralized DCA driven by cognitive radio techniques and macro FM2 development. In fact, we're going to talk something the last comments issued here in, in the last panel regarding interference from, from FEM2 to, to, to macro. And the last one, cell optimization cellular networks. We try to, to introduce some realistic problem that uh, we have, operators have, when deploying deploy network. And, it, and the problem is simply to, to, to set the proper values from a lot of parameters in the base station in, in, in order to just optimize, optimize, <coughs> optimize some performance. For example, the absence of, of holes in the network, minimize overlapping areas, and so on. <coughs> so let's go then to DSA and, and cognitive radio. So it's now that it has been also considered in a big <coughs> extensively in, in, in this summit. The, the demand for more spectrum has become a huge challenge worldwide. Uh, while at the same time, more of the usable spectrum is already located. So that's no point of that. 
But, uh, however, uh, previous studies, studies initiated, I would say, 10 years ago, more or less by DARPA in, in, in the States, paradoxically, um, found that most of the, allocated, of the allocated spectrum is unused, uh, or even underutilized. So, uh, the consequence uh, seemed clear. Just why not use this spectrum to mitigate the scarcity that before was mentioned? And that's an interesting idea. The problem is how to do that, how to exploit it without damaging the, the owners of the, of the usage rights of this spectrum. That is not a minor issue. But that's worth it just to, to, to explore this, this path. So, it's fair to say that the, the, the present spectrum policy uses static approach, that's known, and also it considers white coverage extensions. This has been worked very well over the last, I would say, 100 years. But perhaps nowadays it's time to revisit this procedure. Probably we need to focus more and more on limited time and space uh, grants of the, for the allocated spectrum. And cognitive could be a technology to do that. So in this context appear then dynamic uh, spectra access and a cognitive radio. So just to, 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 to define, uh, def, uh, dynamic spectrum uh, access simply allocates dynamically the spectrum to a radio wing. That's, that's for sure. By doing that, opportunistic uh, networks could be built, provided that the a spectrum used coming from this, for example, white space, is used properly. That's, that's the challenge. I would say properly without causing, without damaging, I would say, the, the, the primary users. But cognitive radio network is more than that. Cognitive radio network refers to, I say here, adaptive self, adaptive and self-organizing radio networks. They are capable to react to the environment, either, or either, I mean, in any level, from physical to application layers. And also, in the user's plane, <coughs> user's plane, uh, managing plane or control plane. So it's much more than physical layer. In fact, in the last presentation, I think from Juan Carlos Zuniga that was showing that's, that's cognitive block in, in some, as a some entity in the, at the network level. At that point, it's fair to say that the cognitive, uh, I would say, cognitive radio network appears lately, at least, as far as I know, in 1999 by Mitova in his PhD dissertation. And uh, he emphasizes aspects like awareness, learning, and reasoning as a, uh, key elements in the building of this cognitive radio network. Some additional remarks very briefly. So, will be the cognitive radio are more than a DSA driver, that for sure can be a DSA driver, dynamic spectrum allocation driver, at least for opportunistic networks. Cognitive, cognitive radio networks can, can go far beyond that. But on the other hand, cognitive radio can be used by incumbent cellular operators with the allocated spectrum to do a lot of things at the network level. That thing is an interesting point. Uh, white space, that's uh, in the following I try to, to define more precisely, probably are the first scenario where uh, com cognitive radio and uh, dynamic spectral uh, uh, allocation can be put in commercial terms. So I said uh, television white space is really important as a first probable commercial exploitation of, of this com cognitive and DSA. Uh, so, simple to say, just uh, to start with, that high power television broadca broadcasting, uh, just operating in the, same f in the same frequency, for sure need to leave a space between the coverage areas. 
just to avoid interference. It's a, a, a simple like that. So in this space, we name, I would say, uh, uh, white, uh, white spaces, is where these opportunistic networks, working with lower, much lower powers, can, can find their place to operate. That's, that's the idea of white spaces. Again, protection is a key issue, and has been long discussion on that. I suppose everybody, know, everybody knows, but that's, that's not a minor issue, of course. Uh, concerning the regulatory, or uh, as for the regulatory issues, in any case, in my opinion, there are two milestones that pave the way to this exploitation of cognitive radio and this television white space. And that comes from the FCC, the, 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 the North American regulator. First one thing is in 90, 2008, sorry, 2008, Simply, the, 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 the FCC uh, allows for the access to this white space. That's important, important because secondary users has enforced to do that. That's a very important item. And probably second one, on the practical point of view in, in, in 2010, uh, FCC also, uh, I would say, uh, remove the strong uh, sensing requirements that were needed to operate properly in this bands and introduce the, the, database, the database idea to access in a, I would say, uh, guaranteed, guaranteed way by secondary users to these white spaces. We, we'll talk about a little bit more on that later on. What about the rest of regulators? Of course, I don't know the, the complete list of that, but uh, for sure, Ofcom, Ofcom is, the, the, for probably everybody knows, but in any case, the British regulator tried to, to, to catch up with, with FCC in one another way. Probably that's, that's true. And all the time, is the more advanced regulator in, in this respect, at least in the European, in European level. Uh, I'm talking about the European level. Now, the Commission realizes that white spaces is really something very important, strategically speaking. And so, and, and, and so, push the CPT. CPT is a federation of, operator, of, pardon, sorry, of, um, of national regulators to act in this direction, so do something. Okay, I have some reports here that is a reference that for sure I, I can deliver you if you ask me. They are all open, open, open publications. So that's the point then concerning uh, uh, regulators. I, I know that some other regulators outside Europe, I know from Friapan, for example, even for Singapore, they are doing similar things. But just what this closer to, to, to us, that's the, 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 the real situation nowadays. Just we are in Spain, and probably it's worth just to, to show something more practical about what the space is. That's, the, the, this figure show uh, some results, some experimental results uh, extracted from measurements made in the, in the surrounding area of Barcelona, metropolitan area, regarding how many frequencies available on, on so-called white space we, we, could, we could exploit. These two figures are simple. The, the, the probability in terms of, of location, first one, the upper one, and second one in terms of, of population, of having a, a given band of free band of, of uh, white space, provided that we have three free channels, two free channels, or one free television channel. That's important because of the interference with other channels. In any case, just, just to illustrate that there is a lot amount of spectrum there. I would say between 100, 150 megahertz, but roughly speaking, of course. And that more or less coincides with other measurements uh, carried out worldwide. So that is a figure that could say is more or less realistic. Uh, anyway, coming back to, the, to the, the, the presentation. Standards. Standards are an important issue. I think that every, everybody knows. No, no, it's not necessary to insist on that. First, to achieve an economy of scale. But second, also more in, this, in these cases, to allow for a roaming as with white space devices uh, across borders. So, as far as I know, maybe there's some someone missing in the list, here in the audience are people coming from the standardization bodies, perhaps can correct me or help me, but 
the, the more relevant standards so far I know. First one is uh, the, who initiated in some way the standardization process is the, the ICP 822 for rural fixed outdoors that it was initiated in 2004. Last year, as far as I know, was not, it was not still completed. Last year, I don't know now. Anyway, it's the situation. Again, also, uh, in the family of Wi-Fi standards, there are some activity in the, in the IEEE just to, 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 to make viable these standards so that the Wi-Fi in, in this uh, the television white space. Also, the, the, there are another standards, the ACMA, just more uh, devoted to, to indoor home networking uh, like applications. And others, other activities, maybe other standards, I don't know. But other activities, there are proposals, plenty of proposals. Last, last dice panel, I can, for example, I hear about some proposal trying to, to um, extend the LT architecture just to be able to operate in such environments. Or recently, I, I, it was announced by, by, I think that was by China Mobile, just some campaign, just performed trials in this white space. I mean, I mean, in summary, that that's just to illustrate the white space is more than, I would say, academic <laughs> or interesting speculation. It's something, a reality, they are industry behind. Again, probably we are, we are a lot of representatives, we have a lot of representatives of the industry here who can support this view. So, uh, challenges. We have a lot of challenges. First one, in some ways, everybody knows. Just you have to um, ensure that primary usage is uh, not disturbed. The performance is kept uh, the same, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there are other important challenges. I call here the, the, the coexistence challenges, because the problem is how many, how many secondary users can be accommodated. And what is more important, what about if these uh, uh, secondary users are not coordinated, because they don't need to be coordinated for secondary. That's a big problem. We cannot increase and increase the number of secondary users. The interference, of course, grows and grows, and you know, we have a problem here in damaging the primary usage. That's for real. The industry is the best place to, to answer these kind of questions. Probably the industry will like not regulate too much on that. In that respect, there's here, I, there's, I'm not much about that, but, but I, 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 I read something about a new, a new standard, uh, the IEEE 1991, that explore or try to create radio technologies independent standard method for coexisting between these similar different uh, technologies, just operating at a higher level, probably introducing some signaling just to coordinate emissions from different technologies. That's the first step, probably, in this kind of problem that we have in mind. But again, that uh, how to manage non-compliant, hypothetical non-compliant, this, this standard. Anyway, that's a problem. Uh, personally, I think that in any case, a kind of, of access, a fair access, should be regulated in one or another way. At the top, of course. Television white space use cases. That's a list of identified use cases. That's more or less in everywhere. Uh, yesterday, in particular, I was really happy to hear from, from uh, Dr. Bullicott a very interesting, uh, concrete use case, like me. And uh, I am not going to go in this so precise um, uh, presentation. But probably it's worth just to, to comment something on all this, um, I would say, agreed possible white spaces and scenarios. First one is the connected home, home networks. Uh, everybody knows Wi-Fi are there, Wi-Fi are, are, are really interesting, but also everybody, everybody knows if you go at home, and maybe it's an apartment, you will feel a, list, a huge list of, of, of Wi-Fi wi wi connected. I personally have problems in my home. Right? And because when the, the, you know that the... the the capacity is, is really limited. Of course, we have the, the, the 5 gigahertz band that can help in this, in this terms, but at 5 gigahertz, you go to room ahead, you probably you don't have signal. Even the power you need is two orders of magnitudes higher than the power you would need using white spaces that everybody knows is a very lower frequency. So I think that's, there is a place here to, to use these white spaces. 
Rural connectivity, again, rural connectivity is associated to cost, is associated to, that's interesting just to have good propagation uh, performance. Low spaces, again, can match to this condition. Also, we have here in Europe the digital agenda that 2010 that it tries to provide a kind of universal, broadband universal service to everybody. So we need something to do that, just because the cost could be really excessive in, in certain areas. That's, in any case, is, is a possibility. Okay, for, for operators, that's, that's for sure clear. We have enhanced coverage area, we enhanced capacity in case. Fentwasser deployment, again. Uh, maybe for the bug hauling, we have also talked about bug hauling, but it's a possibility. And also, because maybe the, 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 in certain cases, the, the, the use of this uh, possibility, these white spaces, could minimize in some, in some way interferences to the macro cells of there. Smart metering. Smart metering is a particular case of machine-to-machine -machine communication has been also dealt, or have been also mentioned in, uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this summit. Uh, I focus here in smart metering, uh, just uh, in order to consumers, even companies, utilities companies, to know what is the real-time consumption. That's the first piece in the construction, a kind of more intelligent and distribution network for, for electricity. Anyway, all, all these are really reasonable, uh, I would say, use cases to be really considered in, in the case of television white spaces. Mechanisms for using white spaces. I, I, I think I mentioned before, but anyway, uh, if CC issued, well, I would say if it proposed a broad guidelines to build these mechanisms is based in, this, in, in, in a, dat a data database. The idea is simple. So the, the, the user, secondary user, query this database, and the database, according to the location of this, of this user, and some other information, for example, all the information collected for incumbents, also information regarding the database from the terrain, propagation modeling, that is not a minor issue, etc. at the end, uh, uh, um, provides an answer, a response to this uh, demand. Usually, or hopefully, just yes, granting a channel. That's the basics. In any case, the, the real architecture interfaces, etc., to, to as far as I know, are still open. And even, I also heard many places that uh, perhaps is underdimensioned in the sense that this database could include more, more, more things. For example, some kind of radio resource management, or even in case that we have multiple access points, information relating to this access point and the, 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 how it interferes with each other, etc. So it's also a very interesting issue that uh, goes to the same direction, just to enrich a little bit more the database. Already we have to use that in, 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 at least to, to, to a first, to a first uh, option as, as FCC uh, recommends. So that's the, that's the, the way or mechanisms for using white database, the, the, main, the, the, main, the, the basic mechanism for sure. Other question that was raised, how will we will use a spectrum in 10 years? Dynamic user spectrum, I don't know. I can say something, of course, but I don't know. Uh, it's clear that uh, in different places, I feel the figure of 100 megahertz could be required, in different ways has been, has been, has been uh, launched that the figure of high, 500 megahertz would be required over the 10, 15 years. In any case, full cognitive radio, I am convinced that it's not going to be operative in the next 10 years. There are a lot of problems associated. Technical, I think hidden, hidden terminal, different risk, and probably the most important, the slow pace in the regulatory bodies. Anyway, I'm talking about full cognitive radio. There's much more than white spaces. I heard also in the, in the before, in, the, in some, in one of the presentations before that, in a way, similar spectrum release, that is still static release as on the way. Particularly from, from, from British government, I read uh, not much before, I, I read just some, some weeks ago that uh, British government commissioned the, the Ofcom just to find 500, 500 megahertz, megahertz from different services, major public services, military services in the UK. Well, that's the way. 
But, uh, but I am sure the partial realization, I am sure, I'm sure, sure, maybe not, but I'm convinced perhaps in a, a, a great degree that the partial realization of the uh, com, com, um, cognitive radio in these paradigms will be feasible in, in relation to uh, the white spaces. But we need still to have, uh, I call here, some business model in Europe to motivate advances in this industry. Perhaps some authorized shared access could be, all, could be already um, put in practice. In fact, there was a block in, in the state, the D block, that was, was tried to be shared between commercial and public sector. Then I think it failed. But anyway, that's attempt. Something like, some, something like this could be undertaken. And I don't said before, but probably indoors, as though we have a lot of opportunities, because if we have above one gigahertz, and this non-used or unused or un un uh, underutilized bandwidth is really low, 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 a low figure. So, just go fast then, the, the, last, the last point, the cognitive radio. In particular, how cognitive radio concept could be used to self-manage the cellular network. The cognitive loop, I think everybody knows, in any case, that's the typical loop considering environment, observation, reasoning to decide things, and action. And we have a learning activity in, in between some knowledge base. Okay. The, the, two, the two basic, I would say, use cases that I, I would like to, to present very, very fastly are First one, decentralized DSA, I announced it previously, and the second one, self-optimization of cellular networks. Of the main, the, main, the mainstream access, I think that you can just pass fast on that. Also, as has been explained before, that we have fixed, fixed reuse factors to deal with a lot of interference in, in the macro, at least in the macro, macrocellular level, but not on a fem to picocellular level. We have, don't have regular I would say deployment, so we need something more than, than fixed. We need some kind of adaptive, uh, I would say, allocation for frequencies. In this case, the problem in, problem in HAN is we have an environment with macro and cells. We have an observation. It's simply the signal noise ratio, signal interference in noise ratio. We have an intelligence that is put behind a learning and machine learning procedures, I could say in general. In this case, without reinforcing learning algorithm, and we have one action. A action is just to assign a radio beater to a particular macron frame to cell. Of course, the, the, the algorithm um, simply uh, defines a kind of, a kind of, uh, of fo cost function in, in, in the rain, in reinforcement, I would say, arena, that's the reward. We simply put the reward equal to the, the average signal to noise radio received by, by, by the users. And zero, of course, if threshold, threshold, I mean the throughput, the throughput is lower than a fixed value. At the, at the end, we, we, we will be able to provide, I would say, a set of binary values, each one um, considering if the, the value is one, the radio block is assigned to the, um, um, to the access point, to the base station, zero is not assigned. That's, that's the final result. I have to say that that can be done this in a decentralized way. So there's no need any coordination between the cells. So I think I have to pass on that. The final result that I come to this figure because has been in some way mentioned it before. We have here a macro and we have, I think, 10 femto inside. And of course, we have a close, a, a, a close access from the femto. That they have that shown here. So, uh, we can see that by using this, this technique, these dead zones are, can disappear completely. We don't have any more uh, dead zones. So the algorithm tries to put the, the right frequencies in hand just to avoid these this, uh, problems. Second, second, also very fast, second uh, use case. We have a problem, the operators have a problem in the sense that they have to set parameters tunable parameters to the base station in order to get maybe, maybe a, a, the avoidance of a coverage hose or something, things like that. So how to do that? Not manually and not in a very, very costly uh, process. So one possibility is also to use 
uh, this loop that we are shown again. Uh, in particular, in this case, we have checked, we have just checked a kinds of, of genetic algorithms, another can, can come. But the important thing here, maybe to mention, is that we have dry test in that cut provided by Telefonica, I can see that here, where some of these problems appear. We have, in particular, over far reaching and also uh, holes in, the, in some coverage area. So, by using this, I would say, procedure, we have at once, all the, I mean, at the same time, we can provide the uh, solution from the setting of three parameters, important parameters. The, 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 that's a UMTS deployment from the, 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 the pilot power and the azimuth and the tilt of the antennas. Uh, and by doing that, the, the kind of cost of the solution is zero. I mean, that always okay, that there are no problems at all. And solution can be provided in this way. One thing I have to say to, to, to end up with this, with this uh, presentation, in both cases, in, the, the, in this case for sure, but also in the, in the before, in the, in, the, in the last case, we are using offline, offline um, intelligence. We are not running the algorithms uh, online, but offline. And just the final, pres the last presentation, I think it's that one. Oh. Uh, just to say that, as everybody knows, the, this kind of self organization nature, by, by optimizing the network, just avoiding the worst case that sometimes is, is, is unfortunately exploited, you can reduce capex, of course, but by eliminating, or most eliminating the manual operation in the, in the, in the setting that you know the parameters, for sure we can, we can uh, if not avoid, at least um, use all our, all our uh, OPEX. So I think that's, that's all for my presentation. My presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, are there any questions on the audience? Thanks. Thanks for the talk. Um, regarding the white spaces, that uh, you mentioned a, a, a few standards, uh, the 802 standards that are uh, challenging, uh, well, uh, trying to, to solve the, the issue of uh, accessing white spaces, and it gets a little more complex when it, you get to go to uh, sure. uh, the network and, and the access to the to the, the database and so on. <coughs> Etsy is also doing some some work on that. IETF is doing some work on that. And basically, uh, I, I know because I, I, I've been participating in those, we get very different messages <clears throat> when you talk to FCC, when you talk to Ofcom, when you talk to CRC Canada. Uh, each one of them has a completely different use case or, or, or business model. And uh, it's really hard both to understand the, the, the needs and two, to, to synchronize the, the standards to, to the market because requirements are not there and then therefore you cannot really produce a specification. So the question I have is, uh, in Spain, do you see any specific trend or any specific uh, movement towards this uh, white spaces uh, standardization or regulation uh, from the ministry? Yes, maybe it's a question for, for uh, telephone, but to my knowledge, that is not uh, at least, to, 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 as far as I know, no regulation activity on this, on this respect. I mentioned before that uh, the, the, the Spanish, uh, I would say, regulator would be part of the CPT. Mm -hmm. And, and as, as in, in, under this umbrella, uh, that had been, uh, it has been started to do in somewhere, of, to, to do somewhere. But my feeling is that in a very slow pace. If we compare with, for example, with FCC or with, or with even with Ofcom, that's, that's, that's my view. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it's what I, can say about that. Uh, concerning the standardization, not, no, I, don't, I don't know that maybe some the standardization, usually there are companies who are involved in, in different standards. As, a, as an academia, you, we don't use to go to this, to this standardization body. I, maybe I have had that Etsy, that's also in a standardization body, uh, more or less the same, but in this case, not as a regulator, a standardization body. I think Etsy uh, is also my, my, my view. Probably is also behind 
too much behind other standardization bodies in this new, I would say, technologies. There's something that is start, has been starting to, 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 be, to be worked out, but they are in very, very preliminary, preliminary, with very preliminary stages. There's nothing comparable with the standards I mentioned in, in, the, in, the, in the slides. I, I, I have participated in one, some of these, of these uh, meetings. That, that's, in this case, I think that my view, I, I dare to say this rather exact or precise. And if I may rephrase the, the, the question perhaps for, for Cayetano, then from Telefonica's perspective, um, uh, thinking of, of the European presence that you have, uh, not only in Spain, of course, but in, in all the other countries with the O2 footprint and so on, what, what would be your view about the, the TV white spaces? Do you think it's an opportunity or it's a far away fetched uh, type of uh, technology? Depending on how it will be used. For us, it's important the, the model of, of usage of, of this spectrum. One of key question, and this is a question that later I would like to do to Ramon, is uh, the license free versus the license way of using that. Uh, if I can use uh, the white spaces for increasing the frequency in low band, that is where we have more problems for having frequencies, I have to have some certainty that I can use that for allowing coverage. So a license type of operation would be, would be preferable, okay? So this case is favorable for us. License-free, uh, well, we can take advantage of that, but will not be so useful, I would say. Okay. So uh, this lead me to the, to the question, Ramon. Uh, from technical point of view, do be feasible both license-free operation in white spaces or, or license uh, operation? I mean, uh, from what I, I, I see, we are uh, using a database for checking the position and so on. So maybe it's easier to do that in a licensed environment than a license free. What's your view? So, okay, uh, the, for, the, for the, I would say, a non unlicensed spectrum is what FCC said. I think that even I can add that uh, as far as I've heard from different places, uh, they are um, advanced trials or advanced, I would say, equipment in that respect. Microsoft is very active in that point, etc. That is clear. But for licensed license, uh, spectrum, I don't think uh, it's really needed. Of, of course, I, uh, I cannot precise in the same way. But the, 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 in the, the study case I show, we simply we have, the, we have the, the, the radio blocks to allocate to different femto or macro or even in more heterogeneous at the level. We have that as operator, operator you have that. You just to run some intelligence, or put some intelligence somewhere in some, of course. In this case, the intelligence would be in, in the same base station because it's the central, even in the macro cell. And that's all, you don't need any base station. Of course, that's, I have to say that that's, that's a simplified situation. For example, I am not considering any kind of access. Uh, I, so I, we assume that the number of users in the, in the, in the macro are there and not, they are not, Changing, of course, they are, they are simplified, uh, I would say, hypothesis there. But I think the, 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 the trend is really shown that that can work. My point is, if we use license free uh, for, for white spaces, and uh, the device has to check or scanning or going to a database, if you can use that spectrum for license free, if the device fails or is a problem in, of implementation, the, the damage can be important. Uh, and uh, what is more important, it is not possible to call somebody for switching off this device. In no, no, no. If, no. if you are using license uh, type of operation of these white spaces, maybe it's easier. No, uh, the, no that, that, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that can be easier, but at the end, the point is, to my view, that if we need the spectrum, the spectrum is there, and maybe in a gradual way, it can be used Probably we cannot to, to, to start with fan to cells because I think there is capacity there, for example. But my view, for example, in, in rural communications, there's a chance to use that. There is no, uh, that's, that's possibilistic approach is what I, I, I'm in favor, more than drastic solution in 10 years, so I don't know. Probably fan to cells is not, probably can be used, a use case, but I, I don't think that by the time being is the place to, to start with with them too.
I agree. I think that the, the, the way of uh, using white space in rural areas is... Uh, Probably is the is, interesting approach is to start with. Approach. Yeah. But for, for doing that, the user of this uh, spectrum has to be some certainty that could be used. Sure. No, that, that's a long discussion on that. I rely on what the FCC say, but of course, of course.